Hey everyone, Kyle once again, aka Jurassic Godzilla fan, and welcome back to another review. And uh, yeah, no, I haven't done uh, a movie review in a quite a quite a bit. I was doing other type of movie reviews like unpackaging or or the or the Golden Rises prediction video, but now it's time now it's time to we get back to do um uh, more uh, movie reviewing. And this one I'm going to do. Uh, what I'm looking um that I'm really going to enjoy doing because this is another uh, a favorite one of my favorite uh, favorite uh, comedy films. But it's also one uh, also one of my favorite mystery films as well, and this is a, also a film that me, me me and my dad consider watching together, you know, all the time, you know, watch it together all the time, and never get tired of it. This is one of those movies, you know, and this of course is from from from, from 1980 from film from 1985, and that is the classic comedy mystery film Clue, which was ba which is based on the board game. The, the classic board game, which I do still do enjoy playing that game. And so, you know, and at the time, you know, this you know, this is based on, you know, directed to the well how 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 does it is I look this up, um um Yeah. Well, anyway. Um I guess I guess at the time they just wanted to, at the time you know they just wanted to I guess at the time they just wanted to make a board game of Clue you know and well make it to, to a film adaptation sorry and the film and the film came out in the December thirteenth nineteen eighty five and it didn't do that well sadly you know it didn't it didn't do that well it was said like a fifteen million dollar budget and made only like fourteen million in the U S and that's it so yeah it was a slight Disappointment though, but but I don't think that but but I think with but I think it was but but despite doing a uh, not that good at box office, I think it did pretty good on home video, you know, renting, you know, because I'm because me and dad all all the time used to watch used to watch this film and and I really did I always always I always enjoyed Clue, you know, especially for the film, especially we got great casting, you know, um. Especially yeah, this stars stars Tim Curry as the butler Wasworth, and then all getting used to all the character pieces, you know. Um, you got um, uh, let's say you got um, uh, yeah, you got Michael McKean as Mr. as Mr. Green, who was really funny. Uh, Martin Mall as Colonel Mustard, Christopher Lloyd as Professor Plum, um. Madeline, Madeline, Ka Madeline, Khan, Ken, Madeline. I think it was Madeline. I think it was, I think it's Khan. I think um, as Mrs. White from um, Mill Brooks's Young Frankenstein. You know, um, uh, Leslie Ann Warren who plays Mrs. Scarlet, um, and then um, El Elian Brennan who. Who recently just who think recently just passed away just passed away you know who plays Mrs. Peacock and I also and she was also starring another favorite another another one of my, one of my favorite comedy uh, mystery films that's um, Murder by Death with another star-studded cast you know um and and um, and, um, and among uh, and um, and then some other um uh, um characters too um. But uh, those, there's your main there's your main cast right there, and this is directed by Jonathan Lynn, who directed a film two films I've heard of the other films I haven't heard of but he, but two films are familiar it's um he directed uh the distinguished gentleman and they directed um the whole nine yards with Bruce Willis and really now this also this film was produced by Deborah Hill who Who's helped with John Carper and his movies? You know, John Carper. You know, he produced on Halloween, The Fog, Escape from New York, and that's that's I thought that was kind of neat. You know, Deborah Hill producing the producing a Clue movie. You know, um, so here's how is how it is. Um. Here's how it starts out. You know, it starts uh, starts with a uh, Tim Curry who plays who's the butler, and he's driving up to the old to this big mansion that's pretty much like in the middle of nowhere. You know, seems like in the middle of nowhere. There's nobody else around. No other houses around. Um. 
And there was a, there was guy well, there was like a funny scene where you know he gets up to the you know to the front door and there's two guard dogs you know and um um he gives he gives he gives him he gives him some like um some some meat and, and as he as he, as he shortens the leash and he 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 stops you know after he does that he stops and he like lifts his foot up and he steps in dog poop and he look and he looks at him the dog he just stares with the dogs just stare back at him you know um. And then you also introduce it to the maid of the uh uh Yvette. I don't know who the one was. But um he he, he sees her you know, he tells you if you have your instructions, but then as he leaves the room she starts sniffing something. <laughs> they also do checking her feet, you know. because the smell of the dog crap. Um goes to the kitchen, have you have there's the there's the cook in there and then the doorbell rings and this when you introduce to your your game pieces, you know, the characters. Um, first introduces Martin Mull as Curl Mustard. Um, and then, and then also one by one by one, all the other characters start start come to the, come to the mansion. Um, and which really enough, you know, <laughs> um, all the all the all the cars of the characters they drive all matches the same color of what piece they were, you know, like. Um, all like all like uh, the other pieces like um you have a uh, you know Professor Plum he drives a a purple car that's the, that was like you know the color of the the game piece of uh, Professor Plum Professor, Pro Professor Plum was or you know Miss Scar drives the red one and Mr Green drives um Mr Green drives the green one you know you know if you you know if you know a clue you know you know who what color of the character pieces are so yeah that's the the, the colors of the cars they drive are the same colors that the the, the game pieces are. This is kind of funny. Um, so all the all the characters they arrive at the mansion and they they um, get seated at dinner and they're talking amongst themselves. You know who they are. You know because then like they're not supposed to, like instruction that the butler's told. You know they're not supposed to use. Not supposed to say who who what their real name is. They just you go. They just go by these names. You know. Um, so they're talking at dinner, talking about who they who they work for. They find out like they're they're all part. They all work for like the government, I think, you know. Um. And then and then um. Then the doorbell rings, and then there's another person that's that's supposed to be their host, you know, arrives by the name of Mr. Body. Um. You know, and so. They all they demand what's going on, you know, and they um t they told them to to, to to sit in the study. All you see all the room, all the rooms from the game board, yes. Um, from the, they so they all sit in the study. Um. And uh, as a uh, Wadsworth, Tim Curry um tells you know um Mr. Body, you know, would you uh please to care to explain what's going on? But then he says it's a hoax. It's we I suggest we all leave. And he said he all he's locked all the doors and windows, and he Mr. Body runs into the conservatory to to smash the window, but um, there's there's a mean guard dog out there, so I know we can get out. Um. So then they all sit as they all sit down, and Wadsworth tells them that they're all being blackmailed, you know, for something they did, you know. They'll say threaten to pay they pay money to keep their their um whatever they did a secret, you know. Like, you know, they say that, so Wadsworth tells them all what they're being blackmailed for, like, um, like, uh, Christopher Lloyd, uh, Professor Plum, he's a doctor, you know, you know, it's like, uh, he tells, as uh, Wadsworth's telling them, you know, um, you, you know, you know what doctors are not allowed to do with their lady patients. Well, he did. <laughs> if you're sure you can figure that out, you know. Um, and then Mrs. Peacock is being blackmailed for taking bribes, um, um, and Miss Scarlet is being blackmailed, you know, being for, it was, there's, there's, there was a particular name before it was level what she was doing, you know, like, or how, how she, how she explains, you know, I run a hotel, I run a hotel and a telephone service which provides a gentleman company of a young lady for a short while, and I know, I know what it is, but just, I can't remember, I can't remember the name. And then Professor Plum's like, oh yeah? What's the phone number? And, um, 
and a uh, <laughs> curl mustard is is against this is a little special is like um because Mr. Chris said, so how do you know that Colonel Russell works in Washington? Is he one of your clients? And he says, certainly not, you know. He tells him it's not true, you know. And it's like, the girl's like, aha, so it is true, you know. <laughs> and it's like, a double negative, you mean you have photographs? And that's what he's been blackmailed for. And that's what he's been blackmailed for, because there was pictures of him. Uh, <laughs> to keep that a secret. And and uh, Mrs. White being blackmailed for, um, because... She doesn't want, like I said, she said she doesn't want a scandal because, because, because her husband threatened her in public to kill her, you know, um, and then, it'll, but then, um, uh, Mr. Green, he, st he stands up because he, he wants to say, he wants to say what he's been blackmailed for, because he doesn't want Wadsworth to say, so he's like, I'm not going to wait for, like, I'm not gonna wait for our was with here to unmask me. Um, I work, I work for, I work for the State Department, and I'm a homosexual. <laughs> I have no personal shame or guilt about any of this, but I must keep it a secret, otherwise I'll lose my job on security grounds. Thank you. <laughs> and then the professor from he gets, he, he gets, he gets back. I was like, oh, you know. And then, and then, then he's, then he says, you know, it, it just leaves Mr. Body, you know, and. Uh, when Miss Scarlet, Miss Scarlet says, "What's your little secret?" Then Wadsworth tells him, "You know, like his secret. Why haven't you guessed? He's the one who's blackmailing you all." <laughs> and Colonel Mustard, you know, he wants he wants to fight him. You know, then Mister White steps on his foot and gives him the three suitors eye poke out. You know, <laughs> then Mrs. White knees him right in the groin. You know, she's like, "Oh, you know." <laughs> then all Wadsworth sh sh shouts out that the police are coming. You know. And, you know, they say when the police come, you'll tell them, you know, and he'll get arrested. But then, um, so he goes out in the hall and gets his suitcase and it contains packages. Um, and he gives him all the packages and then into the boxes where is the, is the murder weapons in the game. You know, the rope, the candlestick, the, the revolver, the wrench, the lead pipe, and the knife. So he said, "You see these weapons you can use for to kill Wadsworth, you know, to for him to give him out the information." So he goes and turn. He goes and uh, shuts the, shuts the door, and he turns a lot. So he says, "The only way to avoid finding ourselves on the front page is for one of you to kill Wadsworth now." And switch out the switch out the lights and hear someone, <gasps> and then the and there's a there's a there's a gunshot. And then the lights turn on, and then you see Mr. Body lying on the floor. Um, Mr. Professor Plum says he's dead. And he been saying he had the gun, but he didn't shoot him. Claiming someone else tried to shoot him, grab the gun from him, and, he's, and they see the bullet, the bullet hole in the wall. Um, Mrs. Peacock uh, wants to take a drink that Mr. Body was drinking, and Mr. Professor Plum says, Maybe he was poisoned! And she starts screaming, and he's like, Ah! Mr. Green tries to take her to the elevator and goes and gives her gives her a big slap to just shut her up and he's like I had to stop her from screaming you know and they ask me was the brandy poisoned and and then this and Mr. Green says unless she dies too and then they all start to look at Mrs. Peacock you know and then they hear another scream from from the, from another room from the billiard room where that's where Yvette was you know. Because she, because earlier you see her like she's listening to a tape record, listening on the conversation, you know, and and saying that you know one of them is the murderer, you know. Um, but they all go, they all go back to the study, and Mr. Uh, Wasworth tells them that this was all his idea, you know, he's the one who brought you all here, you know, and tell him that he used to be uh, Mr. Body's butler, and he gives him the whole gives him the whole story of why he's doing why he's doing it and why. Why he was, you know, the butler, you know, because he said his wife um, killed herself, you know, because of him. So he decided to take his own, take his own hands to bring Mr. Body to justice himself, you know. So, but they all can't explain who killed him, you know, and but then Professor Plum says, you know, who else is in the house? And they say the cook, and they all rush to the kitchen, couldn't find her. But then Mr. Green stands by the meat locker, and there's the cook dead with a with a knife in the back. He keeps on saying, as the funny he gets the whole time, he keeps on saying, 
I didn't do it, you know. I didn't do it. <laughs> and he's like, somebody help me, please. Because the, the woman, the, the cook is very heavy, you know. Somebody help me, please. <laughs> um, so they all say that they decided to take the cook's body into the study. And oh, Walter was like, I'm the butler. I like to keep the kitchen tidy. So they're all, all, all for the man. They are turning the, the, the dead cook, you know, and Professor Plum says, Look! The body's gone! <laughs> they all just drop, they just drop the body. <laughs> and it says, Nobody! Mr. Body's body, it's gone! You know? And where, where could he went? Um... And then uh, Mrs. Scarlet finds uh, some na the negatives, which um, Colonel Muster, Colonel Muster uh, earlier said you know, about na uh, photographs, you know, and 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 Professor Plum looks at the photo, looks at the negatives, and he's like, and Mrs. White's like, no way can get in that position, you know, and he's like, and Mr. Professor Plum says, surely can, let me show you. <laughs> but then um, um, Mrs. Peacock, she says she was going to go to the bathroom, but then she opens the door, and then there's Mr. Body's body, you know. He's been hit in the head, you know. He's, he got hit in the head. You see blood on here on, on his head. But, um, they now we've learned he's really now dead. Um, and it's like, Mr. Probably Peacock is going to faint, though, and, and Wadsworth, you know, he's like, I'll catch him. Fall into my arms. He <laughs> goes right between your arms, and he fall, falls down right underneath his arms. He's like, sorry. Um... And, and he's just like, I'm not, and he was like, I'm not shouting. All right, I am. I'm shouting, I'm shouting. And then the, the candlestick falls, hits him in the head. That's how I got killed. That's how Mr. Pike got killed with the candlestick. Um, so they're trying to remember who, who had the candlestick and, and Wadsworth takes all the rest of the weapons and locks them into this cabinet and he was going to throw the key away, but as he opens the door, there's a man there saying that his car broke down. And... And then Wadsworth uh, uh, leaves him the lounge because there's a phone in there and locks him in in the, in the lounge. So he goes and throws he's, he goes he throws the key away, and they got they're they're gonna discuss some more and what what what, what, what are we gonna do and and um, Colonel Mustard he says he's gonna you know you know says we have a, we'll all have a drink and we'll discuss what's um is there anybody else in this house. <laughs> and it's like, um, <laughs> it's like, like, Wadsworth, are you, are you, are you saying there's nobody else, there's, there's nobody else in this house? Mm, no. Then there is someone else in this house. No, sorry, no meaning yes. No meaning yes? Listen, I want a straight answer. Is there someone else or isn't there? Yes or no? Um, no. No, there is or no, there isn't? Yes. <laughs> um... So then, all of a sudden, the guy, he gets, uh, Colonel Monster gets the idea they'll will split up into pairs and search the the entire house, see if there's anybody else in the house. So, and while while we're getting gets these matchsticks, you know, cut them different sizes. So that way, which one of uh, the two shorts together, you know, will be will be paired up. Uh, like uh, like uh, Professor Plum, Miss Peacock will search the cellar and. <clears throat> Miss Scarlet and Colonel Mustard will search the ground floor. Wadsworth and Mrs. White will search the up the upstairs the upstairs floor, and Mr. Green and the maid Yvette will search up in the attic. Um. So they're they're they're, they're all searching, and Wadsworth like, "Is anybody in here? Just look out." Um. But then, but then, uh, while this is going on, you see there is a like a there is a there is a. Uh, uh, this mysterious person, you know, who's wearing the black gloves, you know, who's who takes all the photographs and the the tape, the tape conversation, who could they record conversation, and everything else that was evidence, you know, and throws in the fireplace. You don't know who it is. Well, if, if anyone's seen the film before, you know who it is, though. But I'm just saying, for anybody who has not seen it, though. But if, but if there's anybody who hasn't seen, it, go check it out. This is because you haven't seen. If you haven't seen, then just don't watch my video. Then just go see for yourself, though. Then come back and watch the rest of this video. But I was saying the the the, the mysterious person opens. He throws all the rest of the evidence in the fireplace and open opens up the cabinet and takes out the wrench. Um, so he goes in through the secret passageway. Um, it goes through a secret passage, a lounge, the secret passage, a secret passageway. 
that leads to the lounge, and as the as the, the as the man is um as he's called the motorist, he's he's on he's on the phone talking to somebody. And he says he said he, he recognizes some one of the one of the persons, and um he's about to say who it was that he used to work for. You know, this is his old boss. But then before he could say the name, bang, on the head with a wrench, dead. Um. Then, Danny Carmel sort of Miss Scarlet, they're searching the, the, the conservatory, and he, um, then he, Carmel sort of accidentally finds the secret passage, they, they go through it, and at least, the, at least the lounge, they find the man dead, and they all, they get a panic, and the door is locked, they can't get out, and the, everyone rushes up, rushes, rushes to the door, and it's like, like, um, like, uh, Mr. Grant's like, where's the key? And Wadsworth's, the key's gone. <laughs> Professor, Professor Plum's like, never mind about the key, unlock the door. And Mr. Grant's like, I can't unlock the door without the key. Let us in, let us in. They're both saying, let us out, let us out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so Yvette go gets to go, runs to the cabinet and gets the gun. She trips, actually trips on, um, over water, then actually shoots, um, one of the string, the string that's holding up the chandelier, but then she fires twice at the door, <laughs> and so they, so they get out, but then Kermit was like, why are you shooting that thing at us? To get you out. You know you could have killed us. I could have been killed, and he's standing directly above the chandelier as the rope's unraveling, <laughs> as, as it moves off, moves away a little bit, he's like, I can't take any more scares, and Chandelier falls down. <laughs> so they they, they they find that they see the body. Which one of you did it? But how could they? Because they, how could? Because they found. Because they were together when they when they found him. Um. Then they find. So how how did Yvette get the gun? The cabinet was unlocked. But um. Then the doorbell rings. They're 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 just gonna wait for them to go away. But it rings again. And then Mr. Green says, "I got nothing to hide. I didn't do it." So he goes and opens the door, and there was a police officer there, because because earlier there was an officer who was looking at that man's abandoned car. Um, he he he's there. They actually he just shuts the door on him, but he opens it again. Yes, <laughs> and he says there 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 was there was there was an abandoned car. Did the man did did the did, did the owner of the car uh, come here and ask for help? And they all say no, no. But Mr. Green says yes, and there's like they're saying no, no, and the officer is saying. There seem to be some kind of disagreement, and they're all saying, no, 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 but the screen kids are like this, yes. <laughs> so they come so coming and asking, using the phone, but, um, uh, use the one that's in the one that's in the library, because all the other ones have body, all the other rooms have bodies in them. Um, they close the doors to hide the bodies, and they lock him in the library, and he's, de he's demanding that he wants out, and the phone rings. Um, so he pulled, puts the phone on hold, and he's like, let me out of here, you know, and I'll, you know, um, I'll, I'll book you for house arrest and obstruction, and holy an officer against his will and his duty, and murder, <laughs> and he opens the door, like, <laughs> Tim Curry's like, what do you mean, murder? I just said it so you can open the door. <laughs> and he says, and he's saying the phone call is from, from Jay, from Jay Go Hoover, you know, who's the head of the FBI, you know. Um, so Wasser goes and shuts the door and to take the call, and he's asking what's going on. They're saying they're having a party. So he, so Mr. Green makes him makes him look around the house while the others they um, plan to use the dead bodies, you know, to help you know help them, you know, having a party, you know, like um, as um as they go in the study, you know, there's music on, and these um. Colonel Mustard using the dead cooks by, you know, pulling her eye, holding her eyes open, making her look dance in, and Mrs. White using Mr. Body's body, you know, and, you know, kissing, you know. And <laughs> Mr. Green's like, is <laughs> and the, the, and the officer's like, this is, these people are having a good time, you know, and Mr. Green's face is like, uh, you know. <laughs> and they go to the lounge, and they put, they make the dead man hold a bottle, thinking he's dead drunk, you know, and that's what the officer says, this man's drunk, dead drunk, and Miss Scarlet's like dead right. <laughs> um, so then, so um, Tim Curry, you know, says, you know, I can explain everything, but 
the officer says, you don't have to. There's nothing legal about any of this, you know? It's, it's perfectly all right. So he asks to use the phone. He locks him back in. He says, why'd you lock me in again? Um, so they so they search the house once more. Um, Miss Scarlet and Colonel Sorther in the kitchen. They find another secret passageway behind the meat locker. And it leads back to the study <clears> through a picture frame. <clears throat> And then, then the, the mysterious figure, then the mysterious person, you know, turns off all the, the power in the house. Um, Yvette runs down to this uh, in the dark into a room, whispering to somebody. And then she gets the the net the the um, the noose around gets the noose around her neck and gets strangled, you know. Um, she gets strangled, and then while she gets strangled by the no by, by the rope noose around around her, around her neck, and then. The police officer is talking on the phone. And then the and then the and then the murderer has the lead pipe and disconnects the call. And then you don't see him get hit though, but you see the lead pipe rising over his head, and that's it. But you but you know but you get the idea. He got hit in the head. And then the doorbell rings, and this there's a singing telegram girl, you know, but then gets shot. <laughs> And then, and then she gets shot, and just slams the door shut. And then everyone else is pan everyone else is panicking. Colonel Mustard like hides under the table, or, or Mr. Green is up in the attic. So he opens his door. He just runs right into, smashes into things. Or and or Wasworth, you know, he's he's trying to find Mrs. White, you know, and he goes into the small room. And he's like, what's this? Another door, and it turns the knob, and he's in the shower. He gets like, he gets all water all, all in him, you know, from it gets a, you know from a shower. <laughs> But they run back upstairs and turn the power back on. They all find they all find the rest of the dead bodies. You no, know, the cop event who was in the billiard room, you know, dead, and the cop in the library. They heard the they they heard the gunshot. They open the door and there's the dead girl. And then and then Wasworth tells everyone he know he 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 knows every he knows everything. He knows everything. Exact. He knows everything. What happened? He, he knows who killed everybody. So he's gonna take him. He's gonna, you know, take him. You know, how was it? He's gonna re. He's gonna reenact everything right from the very beginning. You know. Um. Um. So he's he's he's, he's reenacting everything from the very beginning and. Help us the you know like um. Um. I'm gonna say in the, um, <clears throat> that all that um the, the, the all all the murder people besides Mr. Body the rest of the murder people they're all accomplices to Mr. Body you know they're all, they're all they're all accomplices to Mr. Body they're all the ones that gave information about those those uh th th our our main characters about what they did you know <clears throat> um they gave the information to Mr. Body and that's and the murderer they said they assumed the murderer you know killed them all off you know. Including the blackmailer. Um, <laughs> there's a, those little levels of, uh, once in the house. So, uh, uh, pardon me. Um, there's one scene that absolutely that thing was really one of the funniest and uh, one of the funniest parts in the movie. That um, as Walter this keeps on explaining further. He takes Mr. Green out as and make himself as Mr. Bayer. Like um, we we all came back from the study and Mr. Bayer wasn't the floor. Told Mr. Bayer, I meant throws Mr. Green down as Mr. Bayer, pretending to be dead, but no one knew he was alive. Ah, you know, throws him, throws him. <laughs> so and then he's saying, like, yeah, they run back to the kitchen. You know, the the murder ran back to the secret passage through the kitchen back to the study. And then it's like, meanwhile, Mr. Body lay on the floor. He jumped up. He's like, <laughs> the murderer came out of the secret panel, picked up the candlestick. And then he puts it, and he has the cows like he's chasing Mr. Green, and as as Mr. Body, uh, he has Mr. Body, he's like, and killed him, ah, you know, and Mr. Green's like, is getting all angry, he's like, will you, will you stop that, will you stop that, and then, and the water's like, no, <laughs> then he threw him into the toilet, <laughs> I just, I always, I always find it, he'll find every way when Tim Curry says that, he says, mm, no. Oh, uh, this is this is this is really this is really hilarious. No, 
Um, so, so he knows how the cook was murdered, how Mr. Bio was murdered, and how the motorist was murdered, and and they explain how how the how the those accomplices how they knew the characters like um, the, the the man, the dead man in the lounge. He worked he worked for Mr. He worked for Colonel Mustard. He said he was his driver during the war. Why how how did he how to give this information to Mr. Bio because he says he knew that he was a war profiteer, that he stole some radio parts, and he sold them on the black market. Um, then the policeman, the policeman uh, knew Miss Scarlet, you know, he says that um, he was a, he was on her payroll, and he bribed him once a week to carry on with business, and Mr. and Mrs. and Mrs. Pico was like, oh my god, he's like, oh please. Um, and the singing telegram girl knew uh, Professor Plum, you know, that he had an affair with her, and that's how he lost his license, and she gave information to Mr. Body. <laughs> it was like Mr. Body was like, well, let's put her, let's put her in the study with the other ones, and they all just like, just drop her down. They're like, um, <clears throat> then, um, the, then, they just saying that how, how the murderer get the weapons, he stole the key from his pocket, you know, then vote well, then they followed and then after that they followed Colonel Mother's suggestion to split up and search the house. And then they explained how the mur the mur uh, the murderer got rid of all the evidence through in the fireplace. And then the and then the door and then the doorbell rang again and there's <laughs> and Mrs. Pico was like, Oh, whoever it is, they gotta go away or they'll be killed And then he opens the door and there's this guy who's you know, selling this uh pamphlets, you know, about heaven, Jesus, stuff like that, you know, I was like Good evening. Have you ever given any thought to the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <laughs> like, you ain't just whistling Dixie. Armageddon is almost upon us. And Professor, Professor Plum's like, I got news for you, it's already here. Go away. But your souls are in danger. Our lives are in danger, you beatnik. <laughs> so then, and then, um, and then the next Walter, he switches out the lights, and this is where after after Wayne switches out the lights, this is what that's when you get into your um, one of three other endings, you know. So after so so after he after he switches after he switches on um the lights, this is where you get get into the first all this is where you get to do the first alternate ending, where where it's revealed where it's revealed to that um. We we're saying how um where the for how the first how how the the cook and Mr. Bio were killed, saying that Yvette, Yvette did it. He she killed them both. But then but then the murderer but then, but then the murderer killed no then the murderer later on killed Yvette, then he pointed to they pointed to um that it was Miss Scarlet who did it. That she killed Yvette and then he killed and she killed all the rest of the the rest of the three people. And you know he's in me, and Ms. Walter was like, you know, um, you know the gun's missing, gentlemen. You know, empty your pockets and your and ladies empty your purses. Where is the gun? Is the murderer and Miss Scarlet has the gun. You know, and one says, <laughs> there's one there one that says, and now all the three of them, you know, why did they do it? You know, um, you know, what to learn about all their secrets? You know, um. So, she you know, plans, you know, sell sell all their secrets, you know, on the highest, you know, betting, you know. But then she's going to plan, she was going to, she was going to kill Wadsworth, you know, because him as a butler, he has no, he knows absolutely nothing government related. So, but then, as he's about to shoot him, he says, not so fast, Miss Scott, I do know Scrooge too, you know, saying there's no more bullets up in the gun, you know. He's, he's trying to trick him, like, there was one, there was one shot in Mr. Biden's study, two for the chandelier, two at the lounge door, one for the singing telegram. It's like one plus two plus two plus one, you know, and it's like no, he's like no, there's only one shot that got the chandelier. That's one plus two plus one plus one. And then he's like, and if you're right, that'd be one plus two plus one plus one plus one, not one plus two plus one plus one. He's like, oh, shut up, you know. And the doorbell rings and distracting, and then Guazzo grabs the gun, and <laughs> Mr. Brain flies to the door and opens up, and there's the police, you know. And the and the, and the chief of police was that old guy who was selling the the he, the heaven pamphlets, you know. <laughs> um. And it's like, and it's like um, and and Miss Scarlet's like Miss Scarlet's like Wazard, don't hate me for trying to shoot you. And then Wazard's like, 
Frankly, it's God. I don't give a damn. And he's his trailer. As I tried to show you before, there are no more bulls as I was going to see. <laughs> there was one. There were actually there was one more after all, and shoots the other chandelier, and one falls and falls right behind Crow Mustard, and that's the end of alternate ending number one. <laughs> and then again, then, then it gets right into the second alternate ending, where this time where she put where Walter tells that it, it was Mrs. Peacock who was the murderer. You know, and you know it's the same brand, practically, practically the same same story of why she did it, why she did it, you know. You know, it's probably it's pro almost practically the same story though. And so, so she, so they, the she leaves for while well, they're all singing for she's the jolly good fellow, you know. And, but then, and you know, and and it was like, and, and Wilder well, reveals, you know, he's with the FBI with the FBI, and it's like that phone call, Mr. Hoover. I work for him, of course. How else I would know about you all, you know? Um. So as she, Miss Peacock was leaving her car, the old guy, the old, the old guy, you know, selling the pamphlets, and he's like, you know, you know, puts the gun on her, and he's like, okay, take her away, you know. Wadsworth, we got her. <laughs> and then, and then the when and then Wadsworth says, you know, we always get her a man, and <laughs> Mr. Green is like, Mrs. Peacock was a man, then Colonel Mustard and Wadsworth will slap him. Uh, Michael McKean as um, Mr. Crane was really funny in this film. It was it always makes me and my dad laugh how Michael McKean is, does as Mr. Green. How he that's how he is, is acting in this film, you know. But then, but then you get into the re the real how the, the, getting into the last ending, which is the real ending. How this is this is how exactly how everything happened. So as Walter once again ex turns as he turns the lights back on, then he. Then he tells him um, that Professor Plum he killed Mr. Body, you know. He killed him with the candlestick, you know. And then, then the Mrs. Peacock she killed the cook with the knife. And, and then that um, neither the curl the curl mustard he took the kid out of she took the key out of her po out of his pocket and he unlocked the he destroyed the evidence and he took out. Opened the opened the cabinet and took out the wrench and used the secret passage to kill the the motorist with the wrench. And then he then he tells then he tells that Mrs. White he she uh she switched out the electricity the first time when the, when the, when they were searching the house for the second time she one of those switched out the electricity and then she got the robe and strangled Yvette. And then then he said then he, he said that Mrs. Miss Scarlet she killed the policeman with with the lead pipe. But then, but then, 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 then he comes out the last one. They all knew. They tried to assume that it was Mrs. It was Mr. Green who shot the singing telegram girl. But he's not saying that he didn't do it. He said he's one who says the gun is missing. Whoever shot, whoever, whoever's got the gun shot the girl. Then Wasworth pulls out the gun and saying that he shot her. So, but then he revealed. But then he revealed himself that he is really the real Mr. Body and Professor. Professor Plum was like, "Who did I kill?" And he said, "My butler." So that Mr. B really Mr. Boy was just as was the was the butler was the butler, and Wadsworth is really the real Mr. Boy, and he killed the butler. So, so they're all they're all about he was about to leave, you know, and saying that um, you know, we'll just stack the bodies in the cellar and luck it leave quietly one at a time, you know, forget that any of this ever happened, and. Uh, Miss Green, um, you know, says you'll be just continuing blackmailing us, and he, then he says, "Why not?" Then I'll tell you when I pulls out a gun, he shoots. And he shoots, uh, Mr. Body. It's like, oh, good shot, Green, and very good, you know. But then he, but he tells, tells it all the rest of the gun point. He says, "Um, are you a cop? No, I'm a plant. A plant? I thought men usually like you are called a fruit." He says, like, "That's very funny." And he's with the FBI, you know. That phone call for Jago Hoover was for me, you know. And says, "Told you I didn't do it." So the whole his whole gayness thing was just a, a cover up, you know. That's what he was saying. I was like, he was just using that as a cover up. <laughs> so he's he really, really with the FBI, and there's the the chief, you know, saying, "All right, who did it?" And they're both pointing at each other, like, "I hate it, hate it, all, I hate it." And the guy's like, like <laughs> "But Mr. Green says they all did it." And for anyone who knows who killed Mr. Body, I did. In in the hall, with the revolver.
Yeah, at the end, saying how how the game was, how the game ends, you know, in the hall with the revolver. Yeah, so if Mr. Green did it, Mr. Green did it with, in the, in the hall with the revolver. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like that's how Al did, you know. So like 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 Colonel Mustard, he did it, he did it with the wrench in the lounge. Miss Scarlet did it with the lead pipe in the library. Miss Peacock did it in the kitchen with a knife. Mrs. Mrs. White did it in the rope with the rope in the billiard room. Professor Plum did it in the hall with the candlestick. And and then Mr. Green uh, and the film ends with Mr. Green saying, you know, all right, chief, all right, chief, take him away. I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife. <laughs> and then you hear the the the, the song. Um, uh, was a I think it was Billy Haley and his comments. I think that was the name, that was the name, the band name. You know that that, that song. I said shake, rattle and roll. I said shake, rattle and roll. No, I, I like that song a lot. You know. <laughs> um, that was also well. Also, there was also there was um there was supposed to be another. There was supposed to be like there was like there was supposed to be, like there was like a fourth um alternate ending, but. What I read though, but they didn't, but they but they never but they never but they didn't like that alternate that fourth alternating, so they just cut they just cut that out of the movie, you know. Which I'm which I'm fine which I'm fine which I'm fine with because I like all three of these alternate endings. And the fourth one that would be though would have been just too much. So, um, so the but the, so the film it was given like um. A, mi a, a mixed on review though, but it does hold a 62% Rotten Tomatoes, and I think that's pretty decent though. And I think it, um, I think as a, as but at least as as has a 7.4 on IMDb because maybe it was given a mixed reception at the time, but later on it became it be just later on became like a a, a a good comedy classic, you know. And which I which I thought well, that was really that was really great, you know, because there was a lot of, there was a lot of films, you know. That came out at that time back in the day, you know, but then the but then that then didn't do well, but then later on become a cult classic, you know, like Big Trouble Little China or John Carpenter's a thing, you know. So say so the same with this, you know, you know they they, they they didn't do well at the box office, but then later on it became a cult classic. It was a huge hit on home video, you know. Same thing with Tremor, like with Tremors, you know, which I love to death, you know. So it was, same, so it was the same thing. It was the same thing with this, with Clue. This is a really good. I just remember the back of the day it was a good. There was when home video renting was a great thing, you know. But nowadays, pff, with the dumb Netflix and the Red Box, you know. This is this is this is just a cheap. To me, that's just me. That's just, that's just a cheap excuse to rent videos, you know. Whatever happened to the fun of just going to a, a, a home video renting? store, you know, and just get the sheer joy just picking out any movie you want and and renting a good film on VHS, you know. And getting pop and eating and getting popcorn too at the at the store too, you know. I miss those days. It was a lot of fun. Blockbuster and Hollywood video, you know. Damn sh it's such a damn shame. Now we got now we got to Netflix and the red box, which I hate the red box. I hate the red box. Okay, as I res I respect I respect the old stuff, you know, that happened in the day home video home video renting like Blockbuster. But that but that's another story. I'll tell you that on, on, on I'll tell you that story on a whole new different video though. But I just want to point that out because I mentioned how back in the day, you know, films were a big hit on home video renting. That's what I want to point out though. But so yeah, so so, so I film has a 7.4 on IMDb. I think that's really great. And um, 62 percent on is pre, on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's pretty decent though. But I think it could have could have been just a little bit higher though. But and then I read, you know, that that then I read, you know, they're actually they're going to remake it. You know, of course, typical. They said that Gore, director Gore Vermansky, the director of you know the Pirates of the Car the first three Pirates of the Caribbean films, The Ring, The Lone Ranger. He said he was going. He was a. Uh, he was. I uh, said he was going to. Um, going to remake it, you know. And they said they said that um, it was going to plan to get a release date for 2014 though, but the later the project was later than has been shelved, you know. There's no need to do it. There's no need to. 
Well, of course, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion is not good, is is it doesn't do diddly shit, you know. So, well, I know I'm just a one man person. My opinion don't matter to to Hollywood, you know. So, they don't give a crap. They just want you to continue doing, you know, remaking good classic films. Once I'll say it once I say it again, there's no need to do a remake, especially on a, on a good comedy film like this, you know. Especially we got if you do a remake, what's what what what. What's gonna be a better cast than this, huh? What's gonna be a better cast than Tim Curry, Christopher Lloyd, Michael McKean, Martin Mull, Leslie Ann Warren, uh, Madeline Kahn, and Ellen, uh, Elian Brennan? What's gonna What's gonna be What's gonna be a better cast? You're not gonna find a, be a good cast like that. Yeah, you may be able to get some did some good act to probably get some good actors that I know though, but. There no, there's no way there's gonna be any there gonna be any good as the original cast in this movie Clue. You know, so if if, 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 that, if if they do a, we do a remake of this when it comes out, it's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, okay, you know, and it's just and it, well, it's just gonna be all the typical typical things nowadays. You know, the mystery, yeah, it's gonna be a mystery. Yes, of course it's gonna be a mystery, but it's not gonna be that good of a mystery as it, as today as it was back in the day like this. Because if there was there if there was anything that was the the one thing that was about mystery it's on on film you know it's back it was back in back in the day you know and even further back you know like the good old Sherlock Holmes films you know I'm talking about the ones with Basil Rath starring Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce those are great mystery films I watch those over and over again and I still feel the the deep mystery in in those in those even I do even though I do know who who done it you know. I still get the mis I still I still have to get the sheer joy of just look feeling the mystery in those films. Same here with this, you know, you know. And also, you know, also, I'm just saying though, but once again, don't need to do a remake on this. No way whatsoever. Um, and that's pretty much more I get to say. So that's so that's Clue. I thought it was one of the classic comedy mystery films, though. A mystery film that has a great Sense of humor, a uh, great sense of comedy, you know. Great, great cast. John Lynn, who directed this, I think he did a really good job, you know. Um, yeah, and, and it's 96 minutes, but it went 96, 96 minutes, including with the three alternate endings. But it goes by fast, though. It's fast. It's it's a fast-paced comedy mystery film. Not boring, and it's and it's and it's, and it's also rated PG, so. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few, there's a few cuss words here and there though, but this is like you know like Jaws, where it's where those are horror films. And that's where those are a PG and it has cuss words and those and blood, you know. Those are a PG still, but this is P, but this is this is but that's but that's nothing. This is PG and it has just only a few cuss words here and there, you know. And it's it's worth the PG. So, um, yeah, just three ending. The three Dalton endings and a trailer, and that's it. So, so that's a clue, a great, a great mystery comedy film, classic one at that too. Uh, thanks for watching, and take care, and see you on the next review. Bye bye, later.